Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to call to order the June 11th for Issaquah Recovery Task Force meeting at 4 p.m. Um, I'm going to start with a roll call, but I also first want to let everybody know that we have a lot of city staff joining us today. Um, Joanne, Autumn, Tisha, Jen, Wally, and Tim are all with us in various capacities, some as presenters, some as support staff. So I'd like to do a roll call of the, or take the role of the task force members in, in attendance. So uh, please, when I say your name, please um, mute and say here. We'll start with Jason. Here. Marisol. Here. Mike, I have a note that says you might be five minutes late, but I don't know that my note's correct. Mike Brennan. I am here. Thank you. Nina. Did also receive a note earlier in the day. Nina may be joining us a few minutes late. Pavel? Yeah. Sam? Saikat Sun? Sam? Here. Trish? Not yet. Um, Berkey Scholl is excused for this meeting. Uh, Grace? Here. Thanks, Grace. Janine? Here. Thank you. And Shashi? Okay, I also want to check and see if our alternates are here today. Marlene. I thought I saw Marlene. I could I'm be wrong. I'm here. Oh, fantastic. Ron. Right here. And Stephanie. I'm here. Thank you all for making it today. We always do far better than just the minimum quorum. Um, the next item on our agenda is a business one. It's approval of the minutes. They were distributed to you. These are the minutes from our May 28th meeting. And uh, checking in to see if there's any objection to approving the revised May 28th, 2020 meeting minutes, uh, which were provided with the online agenda. Hearing no objection, the revised minutes are approved as presented. Joanne, has anyone signed up to speak today? Under public uh, no, comment. No one, no one has, Mayor. Thanks, Joanne. Although no one from the public has signed up to speak during, during the meeting, uh, we do want to recognize that during the COVID pandemic, there have been challenges for community members who would like to participate in our public meetings. In our other council meetings, we've been using some time to generally summarize emails uh, that we receive uh, in between our meetings um, and doing this until we are able to allow for in-person public testimony again. Since the task force last met on May 28th, the task force has received seven emails from community members. All of those emails were about a closing of a portion of Front Street to allow restaurants to expand their seating capacity as we go through our reopening phases um, from the COVID pandemic. Uh, six of those messages were in favor and one of those received by the task force was not. Um, I'm just going to check back in with the clerk and see if any of our um, task force members have arrived since I started the meeting. Yes, I see that Trish Bloor has arrived. Great. Thank you. Welcome, Trish. You bet. Under yeah. our uh, next section is under reports. We do not have any reports for the this meeting today, and we will move into our agenda items. First up, uh, business recovery plan. So Jen from Economic Development, take it away. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and good afternoon, uh, Recovery Task Force members. Very excited to be here to talk more about a business recovery plan, which you were very integral in providing input for. And I'm going to share my screen. We did um, send, uh, let me try this again. We did send uh, the packet of information that was um, included at the council study session on, um, on Tuesday evening. And you know what, I'm gonna have to, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to stop sharing for a second because it doesn't allow me to touch the slideshow button. Um, but so, so you received information that is, uh, that we presented to the um, council on Tuesday at the study session. And also with that uh, is the, um, is the attachment. So I'm gonna walk through this and look forward to hearing from um, any questions or comments towards the end. 
And so, um, again, looking at uh, the purpose is to get uh, any feedback or guidance and um, regarding the Business Recovery Task Force. You uh, don't need to, I don't need to explain too much about the background of why we're here. You are very much entrenched in um, the impacts that COVID-19 have had on our community and especially our business community. And what we're also learning is that during the reopening phases, it'll continue, it's continuing to be a challenge to businesses. So even though we are still only in phase 1.5, um, businesses that are going to be fully or more fully open in phase two and beyond um, still have plenty of challenges ahead for them. And so, again, we've uh, developed this recovery task for, or this, I'm sorry, this recovery plan along uh, with feedback from the task force, our vision partners, which again is the Downtown Issaquah Association, the Greater, Seattle, uh, Greater Issaquah uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, Visit Issaquah, Issaquah Highlands uh, Council, and uh, Gilman Village Merchants Association, as well as um, working um, with our businesses directly and best practices that we are sharing among uh, cities throughout the region. Um, so the business recovery plan has pretty much four components and four elements. So we're looking at business assistance and services, regulatory relief, promotion and messaging, and um, making sure that we're measuring and reporting our efforts. So we're going to go through each of these uh, individually. So um, really the business assistance and services is our, the meat and potatoes of what we've been doing. So a lot of that has to do with the outreach and direct communication with businesses. So the city and the vision partners have done a lot of um, calling businesses, responding to business questions, holding roundtables, starting up weekly um, newsletters, doing web pages about COVID that have pro provide COVID-19 business resources. And we uh, have also done advocacy um, on, on behalf of businesses to help them uh, reopen and think about, again, how, how to access PPE, personal protection equipment. So there's a lot of that goes into um, business assistance and that's some of the things. We've also uh, made sure that businesses have um, access to professional business assistance. And so that is through our Startup 425 partnership. And that's a partnership we've had for the last about five years with our East Side, East King County cities that provides uh, business training. But we've also in this um, in this last few months have added resources to provide a business advisors that businesses can talk to one-on-one -on -one for any advice on financing, employee relations, unemployment insurance, whatever they may be facing. Um, and we know that workforce assistance is going to be a need uh, currently and in the future for businesses. So um, are, there, are there employees going to be returning to work? What concerns do they have here? Um, we, we have uh, Every year we hold a, um, a job fair um, we, that was normally May, it was postponed. Um, so we're looking at what things we can do to replace that uh, access, that opportunity for businesses to connect with job seekers. So we have job postings on websites uh, for the chamber and the city and uh, continuing to talk to businesses about their employee needs. And then the other thing we're looking at is uh, using our park space for uh, business opportunities. So, and that means, do we, is there a fitness for, uh, or another type of business that would like to use part of a park space to uh, hold a class or to offer a, another service? And so, we um, are open and, and are willing to work with any business that has uh, that desire. Um, the next part of our business uh, recovery plan for business assistance services are things that we asked for some feedback from the council on Tuesday night, and that was a direct business uh, or direct economic assistance. So um, we'll go walk through this, um, the business grant program, our direct support to uh, village theater, and then the lodging tax contributions that we'll be talking about. Um, the business grant program is an idea that um, was, uh, some other cities in the in the in the region are looking are actually looking at, and some are doing right now. Um, for for those programs, there was a program through the Washington through Washington State for the entire state, and they uh, uh, provided up to ten thousand dollars for small businesses. The uh, application process was very short. Um, 
window was very short for King County because they had an overwhelming number of, of applications received within a day and a half. They decided to close that. But typically the programs that we've seen in, other, in other locations are offering uh, up to $10,000 for businesses um, utilizing CARES funding, and that's money from the federal government to help support uh, COVID-19 impacts. So we asked council um, if there was an interest in us to explore this option, and there was an interest. So we're going to be coming back to council on the 22nd or that week of the 22nd to um, to have a proposal and have some pros and cons about how we can proceed with that. So that'll include criteria and how we would, uh, how much money we could pr provide to businesses, et cetera. Um, there was another alternative that was pr presented at council of, of potentially, um, uh, instead of providing a grant, actually uh, removing the payment uh, for B&O taxes. Um, currently, any business that's making less than $100,000 a year does not pay B&O tax. Um, and so that, that I think we can look into that, but I think the idea of the business grant was uh, something that council was more interested in because there's some other complexities around B&O taxes. Um, we also will be uh, pulling together, we have a lodging tax advisory uh, council or committee rather, um, and they, that, they are responsible for funding decisions for our lodging tax, which is collected at all our hotels. And so we will be pulling uh, a meeting together in the next few weeks to talk about how we can support some of our uh, entities that typically are eligible for lodging tax uh, funds and help support the, the hospitality industry. So uh, there'll be discussions about how to support Village Theater. They are a, a economic engine for not only the downtown, but for our city, drawing in people from throughout the region. Um, and then we'll look at uh, the lodging tax fund itself. Uh, receive again money from when people come and stay at the hotels. We know that 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 revenue stream this year is uh, definitely been reduced, and how we can better support again the hospitality industry uh, using fund balance and future funding. Um, and then uh, we're looking at regulatory relief, right? So we're the city. We that's the one thing that we want to make sure we don't stand in the way of the, some of the creative uh, solutions that businesses are looking at to in order to expand their business opportunities. Um, we know with restaurants that they have a limit on their occupancy of how many people they can serve, and many are making decisions not to open if they can only rely on in interior seating. Um, so we have, uh, we'll be presenting an ordinance change to reduce the uh, permitting requirements and potentially fees for outdoor seating permits uh, for for either in, in on sidewalks or in private parking lots. We're also looking at um, trying to ease the permitting requirements for the temporary signage. So the example here is an A-frame you put out to say, here's where you, you can park the, for curbside pickup. There may be other um, types of temp temporary signage that, that we want to assist businesses to be able to, to um, help better do their business operations. Um, as the mayor mentioned earlier, the exciting uh, opportunity we're also looking at is closing down Front Street to do something similar to the picture here where you have outdoor dining. And so basically we would um, close from approximately uh, Dogwood down to Sunset. So it would not be as large of a closure closure as you see during um, some other downtown events such as Salmon Days, but that the uh, restaurants and other retail would be able to utilize the sidewalks and the, um, and the streets for um, their business operations. And so we are working on that and uh, hope to actually begin that. We were looking at originally beginning that uh, the weekend of June 19th. We have uh, decided that it is best to push it back to the weekend of June 26th um, to make sure we get everything right about that. But businesses in downtown, we've been working with the Downtown Issaquah Association and they've been working very closely with the businesses to make sure all the, the, um, the positive and negative impact Impacts are accounted for and adjusted. We want to make sure that uh, the traffic control is in the right place and also having um, people directed to parking outside of the just on Front Street. So if they want to access any business along that stretch, they're not, uh, they're still able to do that. Am I? Okay. 
Um, and then for uh, looking at promotion and messaging, and I think that's a, a lot of what we heard at the ISCLA, the Recovery Task Force here is about how we can communicate to our com our uh, community and our businesses broadly. Um, we are working on a buy local marketing campaign, which tomorrow will un uh, be unveiling uh, a logo uh, to start promoting um, not only uh, through the city, but also with again with our vision partners to be able to encourage people to uh, consider buying, investing, or uh, in doing their, their business here in Issaquah. So we're very excited about that. Um, we have a What's Open East Side map that uh, is now available for any business. So if any business is not on this map and is currently open, whether that's virtually or in person, they can go online and uh, fill out their information. Um, this uh, this map is a great tool, not only now for the, reco the recovery phase, but we believe it's gonna be something we can use for, for the longer term and especially with our buy local campaign. We also understand the need to, um, again, uh, we've heard this from here from you, your members, is to promote the positive business stories that are happening out there. So there is a lot of uh, challenges and, and concerns, but there's a lot of great things that people, businesses are doing and, and our residents are doing to support our businesses. So we want to, to help share that. And, it, and we hope that also will provide some opportunities and ideas for other people to consider doing um, maybe the same thing. And then thinking about the broader community messaging, um, you'll hear a little bit more later from our communications team, but uh, we really uh, want to, to enhance our efforts to uh, inform our, our customers, our, our residents, about the safe way to, sh to shop, inform them the ways to support their favorite businesses, and really uh, increase our consumer confidence about when we do reopen, doing it safely, but um, really that we are, our businesses are ready to receive your business, and um, we hope that they will feel safe to, to move forward and do that. And then um, important is to make sure that the things we are doing um, are making an impact. So we uh, will be putting together an economic recovery dashboard. So we were looking at these um, uh, indicators, uh, B&O taxes and sales tax, and watching uh, those and comparing to um, how those ch change over time. We're looking at commercial spaces um, and hotel occupancy rates and unemployment and business license. Um, this is license applications. Um, and then we'll be also doing, because a lot of the a lot of the stories and tales and things that were happening in our business community may not be uh, reflected as as explicitly in those um, that data. So we'll be doing a monthly report that allows us to provide a little bit more narrative around any initiatives we're working on, um, any trends that we see, and um, good news, bad news stories. If, if businesses are closing, we can kind of share that information. But it gives us again another opportunity to provide information into the picture of what's happening in our economy. Um, and then so timing and next steps. Um, so we are, these are just actually in the next few weeks. Um, so we're gonna be kicking off and uh, really starting to implement our uh, buy local marketing campaign. And then I highlighted here, because this has changed from the council presentation. Um, so we'll be looking at going back to council um, for, for the regulatory relief the week of June 22nd at a special meeting. And then we are again um, looking to do our front street closure um, the week later. And so we're looking at that. Um, and then in the, in the following uh, few weeks after that, we'll be talking more about our lodging tax. So I believe that is about it as far as my presentation, and I look forward to hearing your questions. Jen, that's great, thank you. Uh, we do have a caller who has joined us. I believe the first six digits of the phone number are 425-647. Uh, Can you identify yourself, please? I'm sorry, Mayor, Madam, Madam Mayor Polly. This is Beth Javins with Visit Issaquah. Oh, hi, Beth. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Thank I was checking. We also are, are still one or two um, task force members short. So thank you very much for that. Jen, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I'm looking over in the comment and chat section to see who's sort of putting their hand up and telling me they have a question or a comment. But I also wanted to thank you very much for putting in the A-frame sign from Canadian Tire 
which is one of my favorite stores. And nobody knows it's not really a tire store. <laughs> if you go to Canada, that's where you get your fishing license, your lawn chair, and some household appliances. So thank you for doing that. That was great. Um, still looking to see your presentation had a lot of information. It was very clearly presented. I think um, I do have a couple questions coming from Jason. I wanted to actually commend you and the city staff that you're working with for the nimbleness and the speed with which you are getting some of these things done. It's fantastic. So Jason, let's start with you. Looks like you have a couple of questions. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor, and well, hi to everybody. Real quickly, Jen, what, or Madam Mayor, what are we looking for as far as the times we're gonna close Front Street down on Friday and Saturday? Is this uh, start at like noon? Obviously these people have to be able to set up uh, their chairs, their tables, things like that. So are we thinking early afternoon, late evening? Great question. Um, Jen, I'm gonna let you feel that because as you have uh, expressed to me through emails today, it had, nothing has landed yet. <laughs> so go ahead. Yes, very true. So we are actually um, exploring also the potential. Uh, does it make sense to do a um, Saturday and Sunday instead of Friday, Saturday? So um, either way. <laughs> um, so if we're looking at Friday and Saturday, um, the first week for sure, we, we you know, plan to have a little bit more time because it's the first time setting up. And so we're anticipating to close about um, two o'clock on Friday and then it would be open till X, X o'clock uh, in the evening on Saturday. So um, and again, that as, then allows um, time to set up businesses, the restaurants to have an evening dinner uh, service um, and then all day Saturday for that as well. Um, if we do Saturday and Sunday, it may, it may be more, it may be earlier Saturday morning. And then again, um, through uh, maybe late afternoon, uh, early evening um, Sunday. Is the idea to keep it closed even after hours like 11 to 5 a.m. so the tables can stay outside and they don't have to reset up the following day? Yeah, so the, so the road closures would be from that whole time. So um, obviously we want to make sure there's not garbage and trash, you know, that flow around. But yeah, so um, the people would, the restaurant owners would be able to um, keep it open. And I will, I will say that uh, for those of you listening, for those in the call, um, this the, the 26th has not been, uh, the 26th, um, we're looking at that weekend. We have not decided yet if it's going to be Friday and Saturday, Saturday or Saturday and Sunday. So as soon as we know, and we're going to be making a decision uh, probably early to mid next week, we will let everybody know. So I appreciate uh, everyone's interest in this. I know that it has been um, a really popular topic um, and people are really excited. And uh, we hope that again, that we can do something to help um, our business community. Thank you. Jason, did you have a second question? Yeah, one more, which was, had to do with the B&O tax. Is the B&O tax are, that we're talking about, is this for gross income of $100,000 or is this profit? Because obviously those are two very different things. So what is the city thinking about waiving um, that $100,000 so, limit? Uh, so that's actually currently in our, in our program. So it's gross income. So that means if you make $25,000 a quarter. Um, and so those, again, to help those very small businesses um, not have to pay B&O tax. So that's currently uh, in our, in our uh, B&O ordinance. So if we would look at, at uh, basically raising that amount um, to cover more businesses if, instead of doing a business grant. But again, I think the, the input we've received so far is to explore the business grant um, rather than um, the B&O option. Great, thank you. Thank you, Jason. Um, now, Trish has a question, um, and it's probably a combination of staff answering, but um, I'll, I'll let her ask her question, but Jen, I also think, can, can I get everybody to go on mute for a second? Thank you. Can I also ask you that, as this obviously is an issue that is evolving, as you have information, if you could share it with the recovery task force through email, that would be great. They don't have to wait to a meeting to hear about it because you, you are coming to some closure on some things. So um, Trish, do you want to come on and ask your question about communication? Um, okay, I have to make sure I'm, okay, can you hear me? Hear me okay? Can hear you fine. Can hear you fine, Trish. Thanks. Great. Yeah. Well, you know, um, everybody on next door.
or is preparing to go down now to downtown on the 19th. Um, there's been all this buzz on next door. So Autumn, when are you about when, uh, yeah, we're opening up Front Street or closing Front Street, I should say, for the restaurants? Hi, very good question. And I'm, I'm also aware of a lot of chatter on social, including a lot of private groups and on Nextdoor. Um, so I know that the, the date was just changed. And so I think I need to confirm a few more details with Jen, but um, we've already got a web page ready to go to make it live and to share it with our community. So I think once the final details are worked out, um, it should just be a matter of days before we announce. Um, the rumor going around was that it was gonna start this weekend. So I think mm -hmm. we've addressed that, <laughs> that it, that's not the case, but um, I agree. We need to get the, the actual date out there very soon. Autumn, thank you. I actually think Trisha's mistake of calling it um, a clo close, an opening first is a way better way to message it. We're opening up this area to, for our community to come down and enjoy it. Um, I'm going to let um, yeah. uh, City Administrator Bob Kowitz jump up in with, in with a comment, and then I'm going to go to Grace after. Um, Mr. Bob Kowitz. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor, uh, members of the task force. Uh, I think it's important to say why we're looking at delaying it uh, as quite honestly is because the restaurants may not be ready and we would don't want to close the street and not have restaurants ready to go. So uh, we think at this point we need the other week. Um, we, we are renting the necessary equipment. Uh, we need to know we've not gotten any firm commitments from any particular restaurant as we are here on the call this afternoon to actually do it. We've got lots of interest but no commitments. And so I think uh, we feel uh, another week is gonna be necessary. We want this to be successful. We want everyone to feel real positive about it. Um, and I think another week is what we're gonna need. So thanks mayor for letting me chime in with that. That is great. Thanks. Next up, I have um, Grace followed by Mike, followed by- I Stephanie. totally agree. I thought- that's what she was yeah. Grace, you're up. Okay, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I was wondering, so it sounds like just like on social media and stuff, there's a lot of interest for um, this new like opening Front Street. And I was wondering how we're gonna control like how many people can actually come. Like, let's say mm. a lot of people come. Like, how do we actually limit that and say, oh, that's we're actually at capacity and to prevent it from turning into just like a huge gathering like salmon days or something like that, which is obviously not safe right now. That is a great question, Jen. That is a great question, Grace. Thank you very much. And so, you know, I've been saying this, um, at least in our, this phase, part of our, uh, our timing, um, this is not a festival. This is not an event. This is actually uh, allowing the businesses to utilize our sidewalks and our streets for business operations. So uh, restaurants will have, again, a cordoned off area that they will be serving um, their food. And so we are working with them. That's one of the things. Um, so again, as, as Administrator uh, Bobkowitz mentioned, there's a lot of interest, but there's a lot of details we want to make sure they get. So they have to uh, go to the Liquor Control Board and get uh, permission to serve liquor that's beyond the sidewalk. <laughs> Um, they have to, we want to make sure that they have those plans. So what are you going to do if, if 10 people come and want to sit down um, at your restaurant and that you don't have seating? Um, and we all, there's also an opportunity for any uh, other business along Front Street to have things on the sidewalk, uh, that they have products, et cetera. So, so we're going to be really working with the businesses to try to, uh, to have that plan. Um, now, there'll be a pedestrian walkway in the middle where people will be walking. And again, it's, um, I think it's similar to early on uh, in the parks. It's like we encourage people to walk through versus standing and congregating. Um, if we see, uh, you know, larger groups, you know, we probably will have to go up and, and encourage them to move along and, and make sure that there's space for everybody, but really trying to see this as not an event, um, but as a business operations. Now, as we get into phase three and four, um, we have talk, talked about, you know, more opportunities around music and, and um, you know, art displays and all the fun stuff that you, uh, you want to have um, in a kind of a, um, an, a downtown pedestrian area. Um, but for now, I guess, in, in, at least in the beginning, to see how this all works, we're really trying to focus on uh, 
it being about business operations and encouraging people to come down and, and, and treat that area as, as if they were in the restaurant or store. Thank you, Jen. Next up, Mr. Brennan, a comment and a question. Thank you, Mayor. Just uh, real quick, um, kind of emphasizing a point the mayor made about uh, it's impressive how fast this is moving along, and, and uh, I'm, I'm sure city staff and your private partners are putting in a lot of extra time. But I'm uh, I'm impressed with the, the plan that you're moving forward. So way to go, everybody! Um, real quick, just kind of a question related to Village Theater because I didn't really give that much thought um, in our previous discussions, and. Um, one, obviously, it's a jewel of the city that you we want to protect. But is there um, some strategies that the theater is thinking about to actually, you know, start to um, present, you know, um, events, maybe not even in the theater itself, but elsewhere in the community as the uh, restrictions start to loosen up a little bit more? Just curious, is it, it is a kind of a centerpiece and attraction uh, to Issaquah and just a curiosity mostly. That is great. Thank you. Uh, Jen. Um, so I will, I will ask if Wally has any, anything else to add, but I have not uh, personally talked to uh, Village Theater since the beginning of this time. We do have art staff um, that has been working with them, and I know that, again, we're going to start these conversations. I'm not sure if, if uh, Wally has anything to add uh, that he knows about right now, but I'm sure they're doing everything like every other business is trying to figure out how to do uh, business operations safely moving forward. Should be yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, we have been talking with them. Um, we are going to ask that they uh, uh, meet with our Arts Commission and our Lodging Tax Advisory Committee over the next few weeks. And I think that at that point, they'll have an opportunity to kind of share their vision. And Mayor Polly, it may make sense at a future meeting of this group to have Village Theater oh, yeah. come and talk uh, about uh, some of their plans. Uh, I know, for example, the mayor helped reopen uh, a Cougar Mountain Zoo uh yesterday i guess it was or a couple days ago uh so maybe a topic for um for this uh, group would be to have some of those destination uh businesses talk about their experiences through all this so um we'll, we'll do that as well i love that suggestion thank you city administrator um before i move on to the next question which will be stephanie um i just wanted to let everybody know that two of our other task force members nina milligan and shashi are both have both joined us Welcome. Hey. Um, Stephanie. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I apologize if I missed it, but I just wanted to confirm, are you are we looking at opening front and, well, just sunset, sorry, front, um, this one time or weekly or monthly? Um, I missed that and just wanted to make sure, has it been discussed looking at it that direction or just as a one-off and then see how it goes? Thank you, Stephanie. Jen? Yes, thank you. I, yeah, I, I did not say, so you did not miss it. Um, so we are looking at doing it weekly. Um, and so right now, obviously, we're piloting this. And so uh, we hope that we can uh, do it throughout the summer um, and see how that goes. Obviously, if, if uh, things change, if things are um, need to be adjusted, we will. But we want to. We are are planning to do it, um, and I think that's the investment of the time and effort for the restaurants and from everybody uh, really makes sense to be able to continue to do this. Thank Thanks you, so um, Stephanie. Being a manager of a restaurant in Old Town, have there been similar conversations going on with businesses that have private parking to have landlords allow some of these same ideas? Yes, absolutely. We've had um, great success working with our property manager. Um, nice. Just he's totally fine to let us use what we can. We understand that parking is kind of tricky, especially in Old Town. But um, you know, if we can take three or four spots and seat twice as many people as we could seat on the patio otherwise at fifty percent, I think that will make a huge difference, especially on the weekends with hikers and those that are out and about who we want to draw in and want to sit outside anyway. So, so far, so good. Thank you for sharing that. That just warms my heart. That's wonderful. I am not seeing any other questions on this topic, so we will move on. Oh, there we go. Sorry, missed a hand up in the air. Um, I'll just remind you all as well that I mostly can't see your faces because I have a script up. But Marisol, I saw you raise your hand. Go ahead. I actually posted, I just have a question with while you were um, talking, Mayor. Ah, okay, Sorry. great. Uh, I have a question, and this is about the restaurants who are not in Front Street. And I think you mentioned that you have you have been talking with 
other restaurants. Um, are they also going to be allowed to open wherever they have a space? Mm -hmm. Only for Front Street. Great question. So um, we're working with, uh, obviously, the Downtown Issaquah Association for Front Street, but um, a lot of the other restaurants we've been in communication with, either uh, through the city or our partners. I know the Chamber has reached out to uh, property managers of the different shopping centers. So they're similar to Sunset Ale House. They have a property manager who has to manage uh, parking for their entire all of their tenants. And so, obviously, there's some... Uh, uh, properties are some ability to to um, uh, use that space differently, but they have to have that agreement from you know multiple tenants. So we are we are offering uh, again permitting easing permitting requirements for that, and we're encouraging that. Uh, we've talked to uh, the Isqua Highlands uh, Council has connected us with uh, Grand Ridge Plaza, and they are working on things, but they're mostly working on it on their private property. So if there's a business or a group of businesses on another street frontage, you know, obviously we, it'd be hard to close down Gilman, but um, if there's some other businesses that are on some side streets that are fitness businesses or other businesses that have, think that they can close down uh, or would be able to benefit from utilizing um, street frontage, uh, we would be well, more than willing to look at that and, and uh, work with them because, again, it's, it's really about for this opportunity to because of the, the the occupancy limit giving them an opportunity to to make financial sense to open their business. Mm -hmm. Marisol, do you have a second question? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I actually have a comment. Uh, I have been talking to several business, and one of them is um, one that is not in Front Street, and actually they didn't really understand what was going on, and they didn't you know wanted to even ask. To if they could see people outside because they thought it was only 25% seating for the outside too. So I feel like there is a lot of uh, miscommunication mm -hmm. still. So I'm just the comment of, you know, if you guys are reaching out to businesses to really make sure that they understand. Thank you. That's, an that's an excellent comment, Marisol. Um, each time we get some new direction about what we can do, we have more questions than we have answers, but we can definitely work on our messaging. I have a question from Stephanie. Uh, it's definitely a little specific to us and Jack's, but the courtyard between Mackey's and Jack's and the green space behind, is that something that the city might be willing to make an exception for to put seating out on? Um, Wally, can I, I just want to check in with my city administrator and make sure it's not out of order for me to make a mayor's comment on this one. Wally, am I okay to go ahead and talk about this one? Uh, sure. Um, or, you know, I can simply say what you have already said, and that is that we're, we're support, we, we want to work with every business in Issaquah. And if they're, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about some common, large common areas, but there's other restaurants that have other specifics and, Mayor, probably mm -hmm. best just to, to have her uh, get in touch with Jen and we can talk about it. Absolutely. Tomorrow. Everything's on the table. Let's talk about it. Everything. Thank you for the question, Stephanie. I am not seeing additional questions. I hope I haven't missed anybody. Um, you guys have been asking some excellent questions. Next item on our agenda is about the city's communication efforts during the COVID-19 pandemic. And Autumn, who is the assistant to the city administrator, is going to be the presenter. Autumn. Thank you, Mayor. Let me see if I can share my screen. Is that looking okay? That looks great. Great. It's been wonderful to see some faces uh, on the call. My name is Autumn Monahan. I'm the uh, assistant. Uh, a little background about me. I started my career as a reporter at the Issaquah Press. Um, and then most recently in my career, I've served for 10 years at the city in various roles. Uh, we have a team of three at the city in communications, myself, a communications coordinator that focuses a lot on our social site, and then a media production specialist who runs our TV channel and all of our video. So I'm here today to do just an overview of the city's communications efforts during the 19 pandemic. Uh, since day one of the pandemic, um, and the outbreak hit in King County, we very closely with our state, county, and public health uh, officials, with uh, public health of King County as our official 
public health agency. Uh, they're the people I turn to for any communications or advice on sharing health information to our community. Um, as PIO or public information officer for Issaquah, I also have a strong network of other PIOs in the region. And we've been talking constantly and I receive a daily email um, with uh, status reports of what's going on for our community, but for the entire county and the state. Um, so we're very plugged in as um, a regional network. Of course, as the pandemic continued, um, there's been a lot of other information specific to Issaquah, um, both in news and in services that we've been sharing. And so today I'll be talking a lot about the tools that we've used and the reach we've had. Um, so to start off, we as a communications team have to be very flexible in what tools we use when we communicate with our community. And those tools change quite often. Every other year, we do a, a community survey that's statistically valid. Uh, the last time we did this survey was in 2019. Some data over what tools people are using to get their news about Issaquah. Uh, the top three are the city's website, um, email and social media, and then word of mouth. Um, after that, there's also the local media. We have a parks quarterly guide that um, goes out in every backpack for kids in the Issaquah School District. Others get their news through city council or other public meetings like this one. Uh, folks talk with city staff, and then um, some also tune into our um, government TV channel, which is TV channel 21. So we used a variety of tools um, to communicate during the pandemic which I will go over all of these um, in a moment, but our primary ones have been our web, social media and really a lot of uh, production of video. So to start with our website, we redesigned the city's website on our, there are several ways and find out information about uh, COVID-19. Um, you'll also, so when you go to our website, there's a black bar over every page of our website. And I want to show that no matter how you enter our website, Google, um, oh, one sec, I've got a note. Am I still coming through okay? Yeah, Autumn, the, the um, audio is just breaking up a little bit. It seems to be coming and going. It was, uh, let's keep going, no and see. Okay, apologies, I've had connection issues. So website, there's a banner on, the, on each of our website that, um, to information about COVID-19. So say you were to Google Day Camp City and you add Day Camp page, there'll be a link on every page of 19 information, which is important because not everyone accesses it through our homepage. Uh, we have created a repository of information about COVID-19 in our response, information, resources, um, how you can help others in our community need, um, how you can yourself help if you need it, and then changes to things transportation. Uh, we also have a lot of information from King County Public Health about what to do if you think that you do have uh, a lot of changes about city services, information on our parks and trails, information on King County's facility that's here in its patients. And then we've also translated materials thanks to um, Help County in multiple languages. And also want to note that you can translate any page on our site um, in the footer here to um, Google Translate. So, um, from early March at the beginning when the pandemic uh, King County until statistics on our website, we've had over 100 visitors to our site and uh, close to quarter million unique page views. Um, we had 40 page views just on our COVID-19 page. So that's a number for any pages on our website. And we also have about 2,000 people who have subscribed to receive emergency alerts, which we've sent several about COVID-19. We utilize um, a lot of different social media platforms as a city, uh, more than many uh, jurisdictions that I know. These are the ones we're focusing on during the pandemic, and I'll review these quickly. Um, I'll also be sharing a little bit with you, just know that these numbers reflect uh, the beginning of March until this week. So uh, Twitter and Twitter go for breaking news. It's where I communicate with uh, reporters. Uh, it is a lot of people in our community breaking news. We have uh, also embedded on our home. So know that you have your account, see what's going on as far as breaking news at the city. 
Um, this uh, slide here shows a list of how many we have. It's close to 10,000 for the city Twitter account, and then our competitors, if you will, but other agencies in our area. Um, and just to show that we have we have worked to build our audience um, and have a pretty significant reach and an impressive one for a our size. Uh, a lot of statistics on who we reach through social media. So for um, the uh, the largest group that we and 44. During the pandemic, uh, we have reached, uh, we've had impressions of 1.4 million people. And so impressions of our content has appeared in your feed. Um, we thousand interactions with our post shared it. Followers. So Autumn, it's getting a little worse. Uh, your slides have a lot of information. I wonder if I could just switch over to um, uh, City Administrator Bobskowitz to finish it off. It's it's really hard to hear you now, unfortunately. Look, I can try. Say again. I can try. I think you might be telling me that you could try phoning in. Or are you telling me you could transfer control of the slide? Yes, phone in. Okay, Autumn, that would be great if you phone in. I'll just take a little um, break here right now to see if there is anybody who wants to sign in on the chat for a comment or a question. And I'd love to get the group's feedback on, we've been in a pandemic for many, many months. We've labeled our information page COVID-19. Um, we are moving from that being the lead to the reopening being the lead. And I'm wondering on your thoughts of, do we message this differently now and call it COVID-19 and community reopening together? Because the information is sort of all showing up in the same place. Anyway, just something for you all to think about. And Autumn, let's see how you're doing now. I think we can hear you, Autumn, if you're good to go. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Awesome. Autumn, are you ready to continue? Please. Can you hear me now? Yep. All right, let's see if I can share my screen. Yeah, I think you have to turn the audio off on uh, the application and we should be good. And Autumn, this is Tisha. I'm displaying the PowerPoint on my end. And Tisha, can you unmute? I believe Autumn is calling in on a different number and it looks like it's muted right now from my screen. There we go. Hi, Autumn. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. All right, apologies. <laughs> All right, we'll continue on. So we were talking about Twitter. Uh, and so, so far during the pandemic, we've reached uh, 1.4 million people in impressions through all three of our accounts, which we run three. Mayor Polly has an account, the police department does, and then the city has a main account. Impressions mean that's how many times that content has appeared on your feed if you follow us. We've also had 56,000 interactions, and that means those are times where people have liked, engaged, commented, shared on our posts. And uh, we've welcomed 2,400 new followers to all three of our accounts, uh, so we have a total of close to 13,000 followers on Twitter. Next slide, please. The next up is Facebook. Um, this is where we turn on social media for more evergreen content. And if you're a Facebook user, you'll know that 
uh, Facebook decides what it shows you in your feed. So sometimes when we post information, you may not see it at all, or you may see it days after we've posted it. So we look to Facebook for more evergreen content, oftentimes safety messaging. Uh, what's uh, most successful in our community for Facebook are videos or events that people uh, RSVP to. Um, so for uh, Facebook, we also have a large following for a city of our size compared to others. And if you go to the next slide, Tisha. Most of our followers on uh, Facebook are women. We, we often joke that it's me <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> in that demographic, uh, between the ages of 35 and 44. Um, so it is, it's a definitely a different audience than uh, those we reach um, on Twitter. Uh, next slide. So during the pandemic, we've had impressions of close to um, 320 um, thousand impressions, um, along with close to 30,000 interactions. Um, we've welcomed 246 new followers, and we've had close to 60,000 uh, video views, which is also um, shows the success we have in sharing video on Facebook. Next up is Nextdoor. And uh, amazingly, almost half of the households in Issaquah have a Nextdoor account. Mm -hmm. So it is a very powerful communication tool and one that has become more powerful, I would say, in the last year or two. Uh, so for those that are not on Nextdoor, it's a private social media platform for neighbors to engage with each other. Uh, but agencies can also have their own accounts, And we can post information that will appear on your feed. Um, and oftentimes when we post information, it'll also send an email to subscribers. So um, it's definitely a, a great way for us to reach a lot of people. We've had close to 100,000 impressions um, during the pandemic. Um, and like I said, it's an impressive amount. We have close to 12,000 members um, who are verified Issaquah residents. Um, one thing to note that I often like to take the opportunity when talking about Nextdoor is that as a city agency with an account, we can't see private uh, neighborhood conversations or posts. Um, we only see... Uh, dialogue or um, conversations that happen on the city's post. So oftentimes people will say, did you see what happened or what people were talking about on next door? And oftentimes we, we don't because they're private conversations. So just wanted to note that too. All right, next slide. Next up is YouTube. Um, we post all of our videos, not only on other social platforms like Twitter and Facebook, but everything also lives on our YouTube channel. Um, and that includes any um, content that you see on ICTV, uh, any coverage of board and commission meetings or a city council meeting, um, any educational programming that we do or that we receive from other agencies. Um, during the pandemic, we've had 43,000 views on our videos with an impression of close to um, 280,000. Uh, we've had a total watch time of 1,800 hours just in the past few months. So there has been a lot of view time. Um, and then there's been 82 new followers to our uh, YouTube account. Like I said, video has been super powerful and useful for us. Um, it's also been challenging as we work on, uh, on physical distancing. So we've been very creative with Mayor Polly, with other uh, people in our community on how we produce video in this time. Uh, we have produced a, a ton of content, oftentimes in asking people to submit videos they record of themselves or recording um, WebEx or a Skype uh, phone calls or conversations and using those to help educate our community. So we've engaged um, a lot of people in our community. Mayor Polly just interviewed um, two representatives from Swedish Issaquah that we shared this week. But we've also worked with local businesses who have submitted um, stories about what they're doing to um, stay afloat during the pandemic. We've had council members that have submitted uh, tips that we use to share with the community. So we've gotten very creative in how we produce video because again, it is one of our most powerful tools that we have. Uh, Mayor Polly also has a, an e-newsletter, um, and we have sent more than uh, 18 um, newsletters out since the pandemic has started. Uh, we have a subscriber base of about 7,000 uh, subscribers. Um, so we have reached a lot of people that way and keeping them updated on um, any and all things related to um, how we're responding to the pandemic. We also have several other more specific newsletters. There's one targeted at the Senior Center um, customers. We also have 
a database of all of our parks customers. So anytime you subscribe to a parks and recreation program, um, you also are part of that system. And we have close to 12,000 followers or subscribers to that um, who will receive updates on any changes to parks and recreation services. And then, as Jen noted, we also have a new economic development e newsletter uh, that we just started a couple months ago that's directed um, specifically toward communication and business. Our team uh, not only focuses on online engagement, but also in in person engagement, which has again been challenging during the pandemic. Um, but we have a neighborhood engagement program and we've continued to work on connections we make with our neighborhoods. Um, we've heard from a lot of our community, it's still important to have those connections. And so, so far we've met with a few uh, specific neighborhoods via Skype or um, WebEx and uh, just had community meetings where Mayor Polly will share updates on how the city is responding to the pandemic. And then also just talk about other neighborhood issues that are still continuing. So um, that program is, is still going and we're finding new ways to do that virtually. We've also developed many printed materials that um, help with anything from um, the, the help for uh, renters that um, the assistance of the city council um, approved several months ago, along with um, other tips or other issues that we're hearing people have concerns with, like how to apply for unemployment. And a lot of these flyers have been distributed through our nonprofit network, like the uh, Issaquah Food and Clothing Bank. We, um, speaking of printed materials too, we've also included a URL on every uh, utility bill. So when you get your utility bill in the mail, on the envelope there is um, a little note that if you need assistance in paying your bills, there's a URL uh, with referral on how to find out more for that type of assistance. We've also developed signage for our parks um, areas um, and um, we work closely with our parks department in um, installing signs where needed on facilities that might be closed. Um, we also have some handouts, so as our park staff or others are out in our community, uh, we can hand out um, a flyer to remind folks um, to be uh, cognizant of physical distancing. We've also looked at ways for trying to combat social iso isolation for our community. Um, so we have been uh, working specifically with our parks and recreation team on creating other content that is local to Issaquah. Um, so that's included um, some virtual learning labs for our senior center uh, members, and all of that is posted on our YouTube channel to refer to. And uh, just more recently, we've been working with our preschool teachers to read storytime books so that a lot of our preschoolers uh, get to see a familiar face. So that's important to us too, is that we're creating content where you see people that are often providing services to our community, and uh, we're still here, and we still wanna provide that type of service. So we're looking to have ways to do that virtually. When the pandemic started, um, we, we didn't know how people would reach out to us. And so we wanted to make it as easy as possible. Uh, we created a new email account just called help at issaquawa.gov. Um, and we also directed folks to just call us at our main 3000 number. And so um, during the pandemic, we've received uh, 1500 phone calls. Um, and that's for all sorts of city services, not just related to COVID-19. Um, but there have been a lot of specific questions about service changes. And so we monitor a call log and see what type of questions our community members are asking. And that helps inform us what type of um, information we want to be sharing with our community. And then we've also had uh, 150 emails um, that are just been a variety of questions or concerns that community members have had. As far as next steps, um, here is our attempt at a very complicated issue. What's open and what's closed involving our parks and community services. Um, and uh, while we thought phases that we're all looking at, sometimes that can also be very confusing and it changes by agency or by whatever city or county you're in. Um, so we're working closely with our city staff on how to communicate best what is open, what's closed, and what is still undecided. And so that is something that's always changing. Um, I worked with our parks team on developing this graphic that we'll be updating as we know more um, as the months progress and can be a quick um, just kind of overview for the community. Um, we posted this yesterday and received a lot of engagement and a lot of specific that's questions, good. but that's what we're here for. Uh, we opened our farmer's market last weekend to a, in a very modified way, but um, we still have a lot of communications work now as we start to reopen. 
and we need to educate our community about how things are different. And so, um, as an example, there was a lot of tips, a lot of things we had to communicate um, through our farmers market team about um, how to best shop safely at the market. And so, we developed videos, we had tips, um, we used a lot of different forms of communication to do that um, and had a very successful opening of the market. Uh, as far as my projects, we were just talking about uh, this pilot project on Front Street. Um, this is just a draft. This is not even published yet of our web page that we'll be having uh, to promote um, this, this opening, right, of uh, Front Street as I change our messaging. Um, and as Jen mentioned too, I'm also working closely with economic development on creating a buy local campaign. So we'll be working with our vision partners on that to ensure that we can support local businesses as they start to reopen. And with that, I'm, I'm available to answer any questions. Autumn, that's great. That is an amazing body of work. So far, I haven't seen much show up in the chat box, but we'll give it a little bit of time um, and see if we have anyone who either has a comment or a question. Okay, we are going to start with Nina Milligan. Question. Hi, this is Nina Milligan. Thank you, Autumn. That was awesome. Uh, I have a question that may have been asked earlier because I came to the meeting late, so pardon me if it's a repeat, but it is a communication topic. And that was, um, as we reopened the streets uh, for Front Streets, did we talk about using signage out on the freeway to redirect traffic? I Let me see if we still have uh, Jen on. If not, I might have to ask Wally about that one or Autumn. I can attempt. Oh, great. Thanks, Autumn. Yeah, I think um, I, one thing I know that Jen's talking about with businesses and with our city team is how to best redirect traffic. It's, we have, um, we've closed Front Street before, um, and so I think we have a lot of those traffic control plans in place where we use variable message boards um, and other signage and tools to redirect. I'll be doing a lot of communication as well about that closure and then working with a lot of the, you know, like DIA and other groups to educate those who um, might be able to tell their customers and others about the closure. So um, we, we will definitely be sharing that information um, quite widely uh, once we have all the details. Thank you, Autumn. Another question uh, or comment on the graphic actually from Janine. Thank you, Mayor Pauly. Um, I was very impressed with all the amount of information that you shared, Autumn. Thanks very much. It's very comprehensive and really great to see. There was an image that you shared um, that was an attempt to display what the parks was open and what's not open. Um, that yeah. was really that was really cool with the red, yellow, green. Um, just something to consider with communications um, for those uh, in, in our community that are experiencing color blindness, oh. you may want to consider a different way to represent that. Janine, Very that good is point. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, this group never ceases to amaze me. <laughs> Thank you for that. Ron, you have a question. Yeah, thanks. And Janine, that was actually a really good question. That was awesome. really awesome. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. No. Um, take it for granted. So actually going back to that same graphic, because I have a question about that graphic as well. Uh, I noticed that there's closures for parks and it says parks and restrooms. My question is, do we want to have all restrooms closed? Because some restrooms, such as the Rainier Trail, is a thoroughfare. And if you're out walking your dog or whatever, that is sometimes a life-saving thing to have. Otherwise, what happens? Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe we want to select key restrooms to have open as opposed to waiting for phase two or three to happen. Thank you for the question, Ron. Now, normally I would have my parks director comment on that. Um, I might have city administrator Bob Quiff write an answer to that question because it's. I don't think it's a choosing to. I think it's a whether you're allowed to. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, let me uh, take this as a question. I think we want to balance, um, you know, the, the ability to uh, uh, provide the amenity as well as to be thoughtful about where we are with the uh, reopenings. And so we'll take the question and we'll let you know what we discover. That was great. Thank you, City Administrator Bob Quitz. 
I am not seeing any others lining up for questions on the communications topic. I want to thank Autumn for such a thorough presentation. There is an amazing body of work, new work that we weren't expecting to do that got done this year. So the next item on our agenda this afternoon is uh, the work plan update. And I'm going to ask City Administrator um, Bob Kowitz to um, talk about that topic. Wally. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the, uh, of the task force. Um, I also have been having internet problems, so I've had to switch devices. So if you'll just bear with me um, as, I, uh, as I bring up uh, the agenda from uh, the meeting. Uh, really, uh, not a lot of additional things to report. We really have been focusing uh, primarily on the issues of economic development, uh, which I think we gave a, a complete overview to. Um, I will mention that uh, at the next meeting, uh, we have scheduled the director of the King County Health Department uh, to be our guest. Mm. And so she will be coming and talking about uh, the issues that uh, King County is facing uh, as we are moving forward. And I know that the, the group has had a lot of questions uh, regarding that. And so we'll be able uh, to answer those questions uh, at that meeting. And again, from the discussion today, I think there's lots of uh, interest in having um, some of our large uh, businesses, destination businesses uh, speak. So we'll work at seeing if we can get both Village Theater and um, the zoo uh, on the meeting after that. So Mayor Polly, uh, I'm certainly happy to answer any additional questions that the task force may have. Thank you. I'm not seeing any questions right now. Um, Wally, on the... Uh, uh, work plan update, um, I think I guess I misunderstood that topic. So you were providing our um, our task force with an update on their work plan. Okay, thank That's you. Correct. That's correct. Excellent. That's correct. Not, we, have, we have lots of work plans. We have uh, lots of work plans. <laughs> That's true. Um, and I'll also thank you to all of the members here for helping put that work plan together. It's one of the first times I've ever seen the community develop the draft work plan and hand it back for us to get the work done. So that, in case you didn't know, was novel to our city and really appreciated. Still not seeing any questions. I'll kind of open it up for general questions then. If there's something on the minds of our members, it is 510. I want to be respectful of your time, but we do have you booked through 530. If anybody would like to ask a question about another topic that we haven't discussed or just to make a comment, please feel free to do so. And I'll leave some time for people to use the chat box. Great, here we go. Let's start with Grace. Um, okay, thank you, Madam Mayor. I have um, two questions slash comments. So um, my first one is that um, I know we kind of talked about in the past, like giving a guide of like best practices to businesses for reopening, but I couldn't remember specifics about that. Um, but I've seen like some businesses that they keep all the windows and the doors open. And I think um, like I'm not a public health official, but that just makes it better. So that it's not like an enclosed space. But then I noticed that some don't do that. And I'm wondering if we're gonna have any directive or like best practices, like you should be doing this to restaurants. Great question. Um, it looks to me to the administrator like Jen may be off the call right now. Is that something you'd be able to address? If you're still on the call. <laughs> um, oh, here he comes. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> so if, if all of these, if, if all of these uh, would be the same things with the uh, with the buttons. Um, yeah. So yes, we are working with our regional uh, partners uh, in what has been known as uh, Startup 425 and is now Restart 425. Uh, it is a collection of east side cities. Uh, they are putting together that information, so we're working closely with them, uh, and those best practices will be regional. I think one of the things that this task force actually talked about was you know, to have as much regional information as we could versus uh, city-specific information, and so that is uh, something that we're planning on doing um, as we move forward. Thank you. Grace, I'm going to add a little bit to that as well, too. Um, uh, during a, a time like this, we all sort of draw our lines in the sand about what we feel safe about and what we don't. And um, uh, I personally have sat down with my husband and had conversations about which stores using 
best practices I'm comfortable going in and which ones I'm not. So you are correct that all stores are not doing it the same. And as a community and as a user of services, you can say something to the store owner and you can speak with your wallet. So I think we need to encourage everyone in the community to make the choices that make them feel safe and healthy as we work our way towards the uh, reopening. I'm a big fan of everything in fresh air or have all those doors open. And so that's sort of my personal thinking on it as well. I have the next person up is Ron Paul. Hi, thank you, Madam Mayor. So uh, visit is quant. Uh, I'm running the analytics for uh, the visitor data. And uh, not to overcommit, but maybe one of the things that we might be able to assist with the downtown businesses is we could pull visitor data when we open uh, Front Street up to restaurants. We may be able to identify how many people are coming to that specific area and where they're coming from. So just want to throw that out there as we are here to help you guys out, help the task force out if that's a, something of interest to the business owners or the city staff. Thank you, Ron. That's great. Next up, I have Jason followed by Shashi. Jason. Thank you, Mayor. As far as the presentations, they were phenomenal. So thank you, Jen. Thank you, Autumn. Those were great, very informational. Uh, the mayor asked us to think a little bit about something during the break. And as far as the idea of reopening, welcome back. And I know we've already started working on our messaging, so I hope it's not too late. And if it is, so be it. But I do like the idea of reopening, welcome back. I think it sends a positive message, not only to, to our businesses, but also to the residents. It's very important that we're out there propelling and pushing for a reopening. Come what may in the fall, we'll handle it when it happens in the fall, if it happens at all. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, like I said, we need to do our part as a city, as citizens, to try and get our businesses back on their feet. It's important because all of these people are our brothers, our sisters, our aunts, our uncles, fathers, mothers. So I like the idea of reopen, welcome back as a quote, welcome back residents, and again, the chips will fall where they do in the fall, whether they do. I think every person uh, is, has a different opinion about what's gonna happen. And the bottom line is everybody's unsure about it. So I think we go in there with a positive attitude, have a positive messaging campaign. And again, that'll just help our businesses, help our residents start feeling safe and not in an irresponsible way. But again, nobody knows what's gonna happen in October. So I think we, we just get behind our community. So thank Good you. Night. Couldn't agree more, Jason. Excellent comments. Uh, Shashi up next, and then I have a question from Sam, and then I'm going to come back to Grace. Thank you all. I'm sorry I missed the first half an hour also <clears throat> due to my internet problem. <clears throat> I had a question. I think it must have been said, but I missed it. <clears throat> For how long is our pilot program? Do we have only a few weeks or more? And this was one I wanted to know. Uh, second is my suggestion would be that people do their antibody test before they venture out because that will give them some kind of protection and assurity they're not going to fall sick again even if there is no scientific evidence yet how strong those are but that will help and um, uh, we might see surge and spike because we are not following the guidelines of uh, three weeks or four weeks uh, with, uh, with zero new cases even yesterday when I checked, we had four new cases. So it, it's a little bit worrisome for me. Uh, but anyway, uh, everybody wants it and let's see. And I think we should review. <clears throat> we should start reviewing from uh, one week after, but definitely mm -hmm. after two weeks mm -hmm. and more and more and definitely after three weeks. So I don't think we should have our pilot program more than three weeks uh, to begin with. And then we can review and uh, go ahead with that. And I had a question about the communication. One of the tables uh, presented was about the popularity uh, uh, age-wise. So they showed that uh, 64 plus or one senior group was only 17, 16%. But I hope the percentages were calculated according to the demographics in that age group. Then it will make more sense. Say 50% of all seniors are looking into the website. Um, I think that will give uh, better understanding i would like to know that she can send it to me 
uh, autumn. It was beautiful, very nice presentation. Mm -hmm. I loved, I liked your color thing, although I understand that colorblind people are uh, may mm -hmm. not be able to see. Um, but it's an excellent thing. I would like to see that, mm -hmm. and I do go on the website a lot. And um, again, I missed something, but I'm sure we have very good rerouting uh, for the traffic when we close the street. Second is about parking, and third was about uh, antibody test or the virus test to feel safe. And then because if we start early, we get more spikes. People like me will be staying home much mm -hmm. longer than we could. Right. That's my one. Thank Shashi, you. Thank you very much. Um, I think it, um, I'll just maybe kind of halfway get through an answer since um, we don't have Jen here right now. But I think we, when we're talking about a pilot, we're talking about being as nimble and flexible as we can. So let's start with one night or one weekend, and then let's survey and find out what were our successes and what were our issues. And health data, you know, as we work our way through the reopening is definitely going to play into it. So I don't know that we have a, a length of time. We're just going to try it. And I think that's about as far as we've gotten so far. Um, Sam, you had asked a question in the chat box, but um, do you want to go ahead and ask it out loud? Sure. Um, so my question was, you know, there are business, some businesses uh, around the country that have, that are putting up signs that basically people, if you're, if you're wearing a mask, you're not welcome to come in. Yeah. Right? And um, I'm not, aware of a business that has done this in Issaquah yet, but I mean, it's not uh, beyond the realm of uh, imagination. So the question sure. is, um, uh, are we putting out a mandate uh, for the general public's uh, safety out there saying that, look, as a business, if you open up, then there are certain minimum guidelines we would like you to follow, and one of them being, um, wearing of masks and social distancing? Great question, Sam. I think um, the answer is no. We're not putting out our own requirements. We are not going to be stricter than the state and the Department of Health. And I'll, I'll take it back to a place of I trust that people in this community are and can be responsible and that they will make choices about their personal safety based on what they feel comfortable with. I can tell you right now, my comfort level where someone says, don't come in if you're wearing a mask means I guess I'm not coming in and spending my money there. <laughs> business owners can do what business owners wanna do, um, but this is a very, very uh, engaged and responsible community. And so uh, in all likelihood, those that choose to join and enter that business are taking risks that the most of the rest of us would not, but it's a private business. And some may choose to do that. I would be disappointed, but they may. So I, I think we're going to stick with the state guidance and the King County Health guidance right now. Very, very good question, though. Uh, let's go back to Grace. Grace had an additional question. Thank you. Yeah, um, my other question was about um, kind of related to what Shashi was saying about just testing availability. Um, I know that in Berkeley, California, they like the city is offering like free testing to anyone. And I like, I haven't seen anything about that locally. And honestly, I, I don't even like, if I wanted to get a test, I would, I wouldn't really know like the process for getting one. And I'm wondering if there's like some sort of accessible service. Are we planning to do that? Cause for me, that seems like a priority because like economic development and all of that stuff comes after just like first taking care of your health. Cause that's like, the root cause of all the issues? Wow, super good question. Um, I'm going to let a uh, city administrator talk about the testing question, but I'm also going to put a thought out there on the table for the rest of our task force members. Um, taking care of ourselves, being healthy, is how our economy will be healthy. We as a task force and as a city need to message that the way we have a healthy economy is by staying healthy ourselves. And so we need to promote behaviors. Imagine if we give up on some of the physical distancing and face mask wearing and see a spike in our numbers. It's not just a problem for our hospitals. It's a problem for every employer who has to send somebody home for two weeks who may not be able to do their job. For the family of that employer who now must 
uh, segregate themselves in their own house so that they don't get infected. I mean, this is the way we have to be thinking about as a community for um, for a year or more. Um, City Administrator Bob Kowitz, there has been some information shared about testing. Uh, maybe you can, um, uh, you or Autumn can share what's out there and then maybe, because Grace is telling us she hasn't seen it, we have to brainstorm about another way of getting the information out. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, uh, Task Force members, let me take a first crack at this. Uh, I think it's important to remind the group of, of where public health resides from a governmental perspective here. Uh, Berkeley, California, for example, the city of Berkeley has a health department. And so they have resources uh, to provide testing um, and, and do things that we do not have since we do not have our own separate health department. All of the cities in King County, including the city of Seattle, uh, share uh, the resource of King County's health department. Uh, if you were to go to the uh, King County uh, COVID-19 website, the very first thing you see is how to get a COVID test. Uh, and the and reading it, it says that uh, you either call your doctor, if you don't have a doctor, you can call a COVID-19 hotline and they will help make arrangements for you to get a test. So uh, that's the information that is there. Uh, certainly we can continue to look. I know uh, Autumn, I think you're still on the line. We mm -hmm. point to most of that information on our website. So I think we just we'll we'll take a look and make sure that that remains prominent. And as I mentioned, we've asked the director of the King County Health Department to be our guest at at the next meeting of the task force. So she has agreed, and I think pending any uh, any sudden changes to her schedule, uh, she will be here and she will be able to speak uh, to testing and to issues again, that the task force has been very concerned about. And so we reached out to the King County Health Director sort of as the as the, the individual with the most uh, relevant information. And so she is scheduled to join us in two weeks. Thank you, City Administrator. I see that Ron Fall has a question about communication. Yeah, thanks, Bob. That was actually really good information. Uh, and to uh, kind of launch off that question about communications, could we work with uh, local grocery stores a, about setting up a communications billboard because everyone in the city shops at a grocery store. So if you're not online through next door or getting city uh, emails, maybe having a billboard would work. Is that something that would be a, a possibility? What's your, what what's the thought? Uh, Sir Polly, can you hear me? I can, Autumn, perfectly clear. Yes, great, thank you. I think that's a great idea. And we, um, as, I, as I mentioned, we have a few different posters that um, we could definitely um, ask grocery stores to post. Um, I also know that during um, really large scale emergencies, we've often put a board out in front of the entrances to grocery stores that has information. So that's definitely something we can look into. Thank you very much, Autumn. Um, Trish has put a question in here, um, more of a comment that uh, when Shashi was speaking earlier that um, she had talked about a serology antibody test and wanting to make sure that everybody understands the difference. Um, that will be uh, an excellent opportunity to talk with our health expert next time about it. But my 101 out on the street that I'm using is if you think you are sick, please go and get um, a COVID-19 test which determines only whether or not you have the virus in you at that point in time. It is a very, this is it, you're just finding it out. Tomorrow you may do the same test and find out you do have the virus. The serology test that Shashi is talking about, um, my limited uh, knowledge, is just tells you that your body has created antibodies and so that you likely were exposed to the virus. Um, that, as Shashi mentioned, is somewhat informative, but it is not necessarily a guarantee of anything. Um, I think it's important if we want to advance the science of studying this virus that um, we do those tests in order to help the body of work that the scientists are trying to do, which is to figure out what does it mean if you have antibodies? What does it mean if you have X amount of antibodies or Y amount of antibodies? So anybody who's doing that is participating in a worldwide <laughs> science study right now. And I thank you for doing that because it will improve our 
medical community's ability to figure out what the next steps are with this. So we will have the real expert here next time and be able to answer those questions. Um, it is 526. We're coming near the end of our time. I'm not seeing any other questions here. You have been good um, as you go home and you sleep about sleep on some of the conversations you heard today about submitting questions and comments back afterwards. So I encourage you to continue to do that. And I just want to make sure everyone is aware that our next meeting of the task force is June 25th at 4 p.m. And it will be the same format. And before we go, I'm going to go back to Trish for another question. Yeah, um, I just have a quick question. Ooh, okay. I'm not sure if I'm echoing. You're fine. We can hear you just fine. Um, okay. Great. When will you decide if the weekend for reopening of the streets is Saturday or Sunday as opposed to Friday, Saturday? I don't know if I can give you a time frame on that, but I will task the city administrator with um, answer, getting Jen to answer the couple of questions that came after she left, unless the administrator already knows the answer. Uh, we, we should have an answer at the beginning of next week. Uh, okay. Again. Um, as we have talked, I think, several times during the course of this meeting, uh, things remain pretty fluid. And uh, we know that we're not going to be in a position to start next week. Right. Um, so uh, we'll have that at the beginning of next week. And then once we have that information, you know, we'll, we're committed to continue to work with our partners, uh, the Chamber, um, downtown Esquah, um, to get the, the information out as best we can. Great, thank you. Great. Thank you, City Administrator Bob Kowitz, and thank all of you. This, uh, I go to many, many meetings a week, but this one is always my favorite, and you're a very creative and a very <laughs> thoughtful group. So thank you all for participating, and we'll see you later on in June. Have a good night. Good night, y'all. Thank you. Good night. Good night.